Welcome back to another episode of Talk Dead to Me. I am your host, Johnny O'Dell. I'm the social media manager for The Walking Dead. And this week, we welcome Fear the Walking Dead back into our lives. Season six is here, baby. Whether you started from the beginning, you started late, or you haven't watched in a few years, I can assure you that season six will hook you back in. It's amazing. It's dark. It's gritty. If you've heard any of the interviews we've had from the Fear cast, you will know this. Now let's get on to our guest this week. I had the privilege of speaking with Demetrius Gross. He played the badass bounty hunter in this episode that didn't exactly make it to the end, but Demetrius told me that we may not have seen the last of his character. So that's very exciting. Demetrius is honestly a really great guy. You have probably seen him in Westworld, The Rookie, Rampage, Lovecraft Country, Banshee, dozens of other projects. And I'm just excited for you guys to listen to this conversation right now. So without further ado, Demetrius Gross. But yeah, we've just been really vigilant about, you know, masking up, gloving up, uh, <laughs> you know, putting on a, putting on all these uh, hand sanitizers. We've been we've been trying to use homeopathic hand sanitizers, you know. What is? Oh, okay. How yeah. how is that different than the normal one? Uh, well, we're talking like witch hazel and uh, lemon water and garlic. What what else do we have? Um, like essential oils, like tea tree oil and stuff like that, because you know you want to replenish the uh, nutrients in your skin. I, I think too much uh, antibacterial stuff on the hands uh, might have you looking like a, a zombie in Fear of the Walking Dead or something. Let's get into your background. You are you grew up in D.C. for the most part, right? Yeah, I did. I grew up in in Washington. Yeah. Which you call Chocolate City? I'm not sure if I can say that, but um, that's what you say. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's what some people say. I mean, anybody can say it. It's it's written. Yeah, it's, on, <laughs> it's it's certified. Yeah, and you actually um, you you were into basketball, and you actually share something with um, the uh, Sasha and Malia, along with Chelsea Clinton. And hey, that hey, you, <laughs> that you, <laughs> you done some research. You went to, I did. You went to Sidwell Friends, and that's where I didn't that, go to Sidwell Friends. Oh, you didn't go didn't there. Go you just did. You just uh, do. I, I just loitered in there. the halls. No, I. I um, they had, <laughs> a, they the had a, a theater. They had like sort of a theater a theater workshop there that was at uh, Mary Kaplan Theater, which is the big um, sort of in the round theater at Sidwell Friends uh, School, and that's where I, I sort of got my got my chops up as a kid doing uh, musicals and, uh, you know, the canon from uh, Guys and Dolls to, you know. Uh, Benjamin Banneker, right? Uh, Little Abner. Nah, Benjamin Banneker, if you're if you were, if you're familiar with my relationship with Benjamin Banneker, that's a story that I've been uh, working on uh, developing to, to produce. Um, and Benjamin Banneker is near and dear because it was one of the first characters I ever played uh, as a kid, uh, so. That's a big but, uh, role for a kid. Yeah, I mean, it was his book report. So I know. <laughs> you know. We just turned a book report into a monologue. And, and I see. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, so you get into acting kind of that way. And you actually, you really have like a prestigious, you know, academic history um, with Carnegie. And uh, you went a little Oxford, right? I did go to, uh, I was at Bach, Bada at Oxford. Uh, I was at Balliol College in Oxford, yeah. And Howard and, as well, right? I went to Howard for <laughs> for a couple semesters. I was at Howard, yeah. And what what's the most valuable thing you learned about acting in those experiences? Well, academically, that is a it's a craft, you know, and that it's uh, it's a uh, it's a profession, and it's um, and just the history of it. I got the chance to learn the um, the you know the oldest play that was ever written uh, was a play that came out of Kemet or what most people know as Egypt. And it was called the Abdios Passion Plays. And it was a, mm. the uh, like a 5,000 year old play. It like predates all the Greco-Roman theater that we know of. And um, all of these, all of these amazing theater, theater uh, regimes over, over, the, over time that, that we're familiar with. I just recently found about, out about this play, uh, Abdios Passion Plays. And, and uh, you know, the this kind of knowledge it only comes from being in an academic environment like you know it's it's fun to just kind of jump in i'm sure for people who don't seek training but i always encourage young actors to to really get training because 
you'll just have a, a, a deeper and wider breadth of understanding of, of the legacy of theater and what it, what it means across, across time. If you could only do theater, TV, or film for the rest of your life, what would you choose? It's an interesting question, you know. Now, I would probably say film. At one point, I would say theater, but <laughs> saying that is, is like kind of strange. Because I, I, I don't think any of us know the future of, of, of theater right now. Um, but uh, film, because, you could, because I can employ some of the, some of the, the tools of theater in, mm -hmm. in film performance, um, but not necessarily always the other way around. So your, perf your performance in theater has to be so pronounced because you have to communicate to every member of that audience. Uh, whereas in, in film, you can, you can hone in and keep the energy like a laser. And also in wide shots, you can still have a theatrical performance. So just based on that equation I've, I've done in my head, um, <laughs> I would have to say I would, if I only had the, if I only had the opportunity to want to be filmed because I could still, uh, I could still operate with some of my theatrical acumen. Yeah, you um, get to tell your story a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm. So you spent a little time in New York and then came out to LA around 2005, 2006 or so. And is it true that your first is this role an FBI was- Is FBI file? How do you know it is, I just know there's a <laughs> lot of interviews. Hey man, I want to be well-researched. I want to like know my guests. I want to make them feel at ease. Um, and then also creep them out a little bit. No, these are right. all from interviews I found or okay. podcasts or whatever. So, Copious you know, research, you know. Copious notes, yeah. So your Johnny. social security number is actually six foot, no. No! Uh, <laughs> um, <Neo. laughs> so um, in LA, is it true that your one of your first jobs out here was actually in a US Customs video? <laughs> <laughs> that was actually in Baltimore. That was in Baltimore? Like, that was my first uh, professional um, like Screen Actors Guild union job was uh, pretending to, what well, shouldn't say pretending, <laughs> portraying a, um, a, uh, a guy who got held up at customs. Yeah, and so it's on all their customs videos. Like all the- Is it all the still on it? TSA. Yeah, I think it is too. Like uh, all the TSA tra trainees, they, they see my mug on their uh, training videos portraying a, uh, a clandestine um, smuggler. <laughs> do you ever do the accent to freak them out? Um, I, I do the... <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't do the accent to freak them out. No, oh, okay, I, don't want right. any, I don't want any trouble when I go through the airport. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's a bad question. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, and you were, uh, were you an extra on The Wire before you moved out to LA? Yeah, I was, yeah, I sure I'm was. Just, that was yeah. That's awesome. I'm just now getting through that show. All my friends have been begging me to watch it forever. And now in quarantine, I'm finally, I'm like five episodes left. And uh, it's been incredible. Yeah, they say it's the, uh, it's one of the top five shows ever on television. I know. So yeah, it's crazy. All right. So you move out to LA and what's your first move? Um, my first move was to get a job. So yeah. I, um, I started cutting hair and I started, uh, while I was cutting hair, I was, uh, I was, uh, working at a, at a dog kennel. Really? And then once they didn't need my help at the dog kennel, cause it was like funded by the city. So, you know, budget cuts. Uh, I started working at a dog ophthalmologist while I was still cutting hair. And all that time I was still, you know, booking acting jobs and uh, guest, guest spots here and there. And, uh, you know, doing theater, uh, tour to play, uh, Black Angels over to Skiggy. We went all across the country with that and uh, did a play at LATC. I was doing theater, but mostly um, West Coast and, and uh, touring theater. And I was just gotcha. doing, doing it all. Um, I still do it all as much as I can. Yeah, um, your your resume is really impressive. Your IMDb, IMDb is like stacked. Um, <laughs> it's pretty nuts. So um, after after that, like, or I guess during this time where you're trying to sort of like, you know, you have like these odd jobs, but you're also acting um, alongside that. Like, what is your family saying about your journey at that time? Like, are they um, supportive? Um, they are, they are, um, 
they're always been supportive. Um, um, and um, I don't know what that is. Um, <laughs> can you hear that? <laughs> yeah, it, it sounds like a kid screaming. Sounds like a kid's upset. And one of them probably uh, my my uh, my son. I got to figure that out. Perfect timing, right? Um, <laughs> That's fine. But, if you need to deal with it, let me know. It's I, I'm totally yeah, cool. It's cool. Uh, we got we got family around. I don't know why he came to my office to do this, but uh, you know, kids will be kids. Yeah, um, for sure. But yeah, uh, so yeah, they they've been supportive. <laughs> 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 um, what was like your first like role that you had where you're like, okay, like this is working. This is working. That's a good one. I think the first role that I had when I was like, this is working. Um, it might have been the very first one, actually, that you mentioned The Wire, you know? Yeah. And it was I was just an extra that uh, became a featured extra. That was a huge deal for me at yeah. that time. It's, I'm sure it's a big deal for anyone um, who's in that space. Um, and it was working to me because it was freezing cold in Baltimore that weekend when we were shooting those scenes. We were uh, shivering inside of a transpo van and I just felt like I was having a time of my life. I was just there to be background actor number one and I was just so uh, uh, grateful to be in that space with um, with those actors. Idris Elba was there, um, you know, uh, Wendell Pierce, um, uh, Clark, Michael K. Williams, you know, Michael K. Williams, um, and the uh, the what's the brother who's from the UK? The guy, the uh, oh, the guy who played McNulty. McNulty, yeah. What's his name? Yeah. So just I, I, I can't was, remember his acting yeah, name. But I mean, just these guys, like you know, these guys were were at the top of the game at that time too. So it was just like just being there, freezing in in the cold of the winter in Baltimore, and having nothing even to say just to show up and walk across the frame and i was like yeah what people say is true when you um when you love what you do you don't work a, you don't work you know right uh, you don't work a day in your life and so um i knew that you know pretty much early on i was like oh this this fits this is this is a good space um for me to occupy and yeah. see what, what i can do with it got you um can you explain the quote prayer works if you're working no well the actual quote is uh, prayer works if you work it if you work it, okay, got it. Work it. When you work it, and that's when just, um, I, I say that to a lot of young actors, um, or, you know, just prayer is, a, you know, it could be meditation, whatever that is, and just channeling your energy before you, you dive off into your, your character. And, you know, um, it, uh, it has always been an effective tool for me, prayer, meditation. Um, and so it, it uh, allows um, one to also separate themselves and their own energy from the energy that they are, are going to be called to portray. And mm -hmm. so um, that, that moment of prayer, that moment of meditation allows you to center, get in touch with yourself. And then when you're in um, a space like, say, just uh, yes, yes, uh, Fear of the Walking Dead, you know, where there's a lot of energy, you know, energies yeah. in that, you know, you can go into that environment and do your thing and kind of be covered in a, in an energetic way and then mm -hmm. step out of it. So it works if you work it. <laughs> it works if you work it. That's great. Um, so what would you say that people get wrong about actors and what would you say they get right about them? I think they, I think people um, get right about actors that uh, it's, uh, it's hard. It's a very, um, uh, I hate to use the word, but it's a competitive field. We're not competing with each other ever, but you know, um, just the it, com the word comp competitive I use because it's um, it, there is some chance involved, right? Like the only thing that luck really means is preparation meeting opportunity, but then you have so many people's free will that goes into decisions of who gets cast as this or what director is going to be on this project or what studio is going to get this IP or, you know, there's so many people's hands that are involved in so many decisions that there is a level of chance to things working out. And so I just, uh, I think people get that uh, right. I think what people get wrong though is, um, is that it is somehow like lying or that we're like pulling off a, a trick or a, some kind of, um, uh, we're trying to like run one by people. 
when actually the best performances are truthful, truthful performances when people are really living their fullest in the imaginary world of, of the, of the play or the script. And, and that truth is what's palpable for audiences. Um, not, you know, how well they were able to manipulate the audience or, uh, sort of put on the artifice of character, you know, but rather how they, uh, how, how close to the truth they can get in terms of finding their, that character or that story within themselves. Right. Is there, um, what was I going to ask? Um, part of acting, are you one of the actors that can watch your work back? Because I know there's a lot of actors that can't watch themselves. I do. I mean, I look at it like, a, like an athlete would look at tape. You know, right. I like to see what the other actors were doing that maybe I missed when I was on set in the moment. Mm -hmm. um, I like to look at what the editors did in terms of my own performances. Like, you know, say we do two or three takes of something. I'd like to see what what uh, cuts they took from everybody's performance. So um, I like to see if sometimes what I thought I was conveying within the character, if that really fit. Um, I like to see the artwork, you know, the production design, how it all comes together, how the set morphs from being the set to being a world when you see it on screen. You know, I'm a little bit of a, a cinemaphile in that way. So gotcha. yeah, I, uh, I do, I do watch some stuff. I don't, I try not to go too crazy with it, but yeah. Uh, Andrew yeah, Lincoln. Sorry, go ahead. Um, no, yeah. Andrew Lincoln. He, um, yeah, Andrew Lincoln uh, famously hasn't seen an episode of The Walking Dead. And every time there's like a premiere and everyone gets in their seats and ready to watch the episode, he just dips. So, yeah, um, I get that. It, but what yeah. is that? What is, is it just like, are they, it, being an actor, I guess, involves a lot of like, well, you know, everybody, is yeah. that what it is? I think everybody has their own reasons. You know, I have a good friend um, who's, um, maybe up for an Emmy and she never watches any of her stuff. And she's an amazing, amazing actor. Right. Um, but I, you know, there's just, there's just different. What did Marlon Brando say? There's a lot of ways to skin a cat, you know? Yeah. There's not a, but then on the other, on the other hand, um, Sam Jackson is, is notoriously famous for saying, if, if you won't spend $10 to watch yourself in a movie theater, who the heck you think else is going to spend <laughs> to, to buy a ticket to see you? So you, you, but at the end of the day, I think Andrew probably does that for his own like creative reasons. You know, sure. um, sometimes I, I know I, I don't watch stuff while I'm shooting it. Like if we're doing a series, like I've done uh, like the brave, I didn't watch a lot, a lot of the stuff before it all came out because mm -hmm. I'm creating something in my mind and I didn't want it to be corrupted by what I saw. Yeah. But then I watched it at the end, you know, so sometimes that's a method for people. I think it's different for different folks. Hmm. Yeah. Um, speaking of the walking dead, you also worked with, uh, Negan himself, Jeffrey Dean Morgan in rampage. Uh, uh, what was that experience like? Uh, a little surreal. I mean, he's a, um, he's a big deal. So it was cool. I didn't, uh, I didn't know, um, that he was going to be on it. <laughs> at the time that I signed on. And so, you know, when I got to got to work and saw the call sheet, I was like, oh, okay, that's who, <laughs> that's who, the, I, I forget the name of the character. It was a, uh, he was like an FBI guy um, or some secret clandestine um, thing of the FBI or whatever. But uh, uh, yeah, it was just cool. Cause I mean, he's a, he's a really, really powerful actor and, and really easy. And so, you know, it was nice to be able to play with him and see how he was loose and sharp at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, with. so you've had, like I said, dozens of roles, but how did Fear the Walking Dead come to you? Um, it came to me through, through an audition, really just like yeah. I, I just went in, I, I auditioned for it and, uh, I think the the character went through a few different incarnations, you know, and uh, and it was uh, quickly apparent. Uh, Stratazemus, Michael Stratazemus, who was the uh, executive producer, that I was the guy, and uh, we worked on it a little bit more um, once we got the set, and um, we started creating the character really um in the war in the wardrobe and the, and the costuming uh in yeah. terms of we started to see who who he was in this world through some of the um the pulls so i think the audiences are going to be really intrigued to see 
who this this guy is. And I'm also at this point, I'm not exactly sure what the character's name is because online his name is different than when we filmed it. So I mean, there's right. I'm sure things can change up until up until you know we pre- we premiere. So it's uh, there's I don't want to even give you too much about it because there's like yeah. there's a lot of intricacies to this 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 character and what potentially could be going on in, in his plot line and, and moving forward in, in the show. Gotcha. So it's, it's, uh, it's cool. I like it. I, I just got a screener and was able to watch the episode and it's fantastic. It's, it's pretty much a Western, um, like an old school Western and, but mixed with it. Have you seen any of it yet? Just the trailers. Just the trailers. Oh man. You look great, by the way. You uh, in my recap, yeah, there is no name, so I just said the outlaw because that's all I could come right. up with. Yeah. Um, I mean, you have the like a cowboy is... hat and the overcoat, yeah. um, and I, I kind of like that there wasn't a name because it makes you more mysterious. The audience can kind of craft their own backstory for you. Um, mm-hmm. And is this was this a one-off or would we see your? I know your character. I, I can't say. Appear. I can't okay. say it is, right. or I can't say it isn't. Okay. 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 Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, but I think you did a fantastic job. What Thank you, kind John. of, yeah, absolutely. What kind of preparation did you do for that character? This character was um, a, like a mashup of energies from great movies that I like. So like No Country for, for Old Men and uh, a little bit of, um, Bill Murray did this um, w- kind of weird zombie movie. Um, Zombieland? Yeah, it was maybe not Zombieland. I was with oh. um, Woody Harrelson, but uh, was it Zombieland? Bill Murray was he? He made like he played himself later on in the movie. They like raid his house, and it turns out he's still alive. Oh no, no, no! Um, so later, so Bill Murray <laughs> does his other movie with Adam okay. Driver that I just happened to see on, oh, the, on the plane. I haven't seen that one yet, but I remember the trailer. Yeah, and it was really clever and funny, and um, and so. I started watching these movies um, so that I wouldn't be grossed out when I got to set. So I, I you know, I, I didn't want to be thrown by the, the 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 gore and the blood. I wanted to be able to keep my <laughs> my focus. So I had to just basically binge watch a bunch of zombie movies so I yeah. could just, you know, get some thick skin. I wonder, did they have like an animatronic head in that box, or was that all CGI? Movie magic. Johnny Movie magic. <laughs> well, it looks really good. Um, right. It's solid. So you also got to work with a dog. Was that a first for you? No, it was not. I mean, I did a dog on, um, I had a dog. I did it. Hold on. Which is, um, no, um, I did a, I, I had a dog in, uh, what was that, that show? Um, Bones. Ironically, Bones. Bones. And then I had a dog in, uh, course this but i feel like i had a dog elsewhere i kind of have a thing with dogs acting with dogs it's i think this is the third third dog that i and, and this was definitely the best dog the dog that, uh, <laughs> it was really well trained it seemed yeah 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 they are uh they're a family that that uh breeds and trains these dogs um these hounds yeah yeah so what was it like working alongside? Because it was a pretty limited cast. It seems like this whole season is going to be more of an anthology type. Um, but what was it w- like working alongside uh, Lenny James? With Lenny, yeah. Um, just a, a, a really lovely actor, man. He's the first time I ever worked with, with, with Lenny. And uh, just very generous and, uh, and just available, you know, available to... to mm-hmm to go back and forth and, and try things. Um, I think um, while a lot of the, the Walking Dead family is really familiar with Lenny, I think it's gonna be really interesting to see how his career through Walking Dead and, and even beyond Walking Dead, he gets open, like the more audiences really get to get to see, you know, the, the notes of his work. You know, he's, he's, I think he, he has a lot of depth and, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how how it how it all cuts together. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, you're there in the so moment, good. With the guy, but you never know how the how the cinematographers and the directors how they're capturing it and the moments that they really liked. And so I'm excited to see how how it all it all uh, meshes in. 
Yeah. Um, I spoke with Jenna Elfman recently and she said that it's a very dark season and the premiere really sets that up. I mean, it's extremely dark. I'm wondering if um, you've said before that uh, you can usually find a silver lining in the villains you play. Um, was there, you know, obviously without giving too much away, I guess, but um, you know, you're like a ruthless bounty hunter in fear. So what kind of silver lining could you kind of get from that? Well, it's one of those things with this character that audiences will be introduced to um, where, you know, this guy, I guess the silver lining of him is like, he's a, he's a survivalist in this world, in this post-apocalyptic zombie, apocalyptic world. He's, he's, a, he's learned how to uh, exist and keep, and keep some kind of peace if you will, like, right. you know, amidst all the gore and, and treachery. Um, and so that's where I, I, I kind of found my love for him. You know, I didn't want to just be this, this evil bounty hunter. I think even he's a bounty hunter. And if I had to defend bounty hunting in this fear world, I would say it was, it's, it's a world where people, there are people who are the undead. Right. So bounty hunting could, in this world, kind of be like, I don't want to say it's a good thing, but it, it, it may almost have to be a necessary thing because you have people who are undead walking around trying right. to kill people who are alive. And so, yeah. you know, I don't know. It's, it's, yeah, if you think about the psychology that, that the writers are, are going to have the audiences go through, it's going to be a, uh, it's going to be a ride because you really are asking yourself those questions when you're watching, when you're watching it, you know, like who's the good guy, who's the bad guy, what is good and what is bad, you know, what would any of us do in these situations? Um, you know, whose side are we on? So to speak. So. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, I don't know if I answered your question, but yeah. No, no, no. That You absolutely did. It's, you know, survival of the fittest, you know, people get most yeah. annoyed on zombie shows with the characters who are like, I don't know, guys, I don't think we should kill them or whatever. And everyone's like, ah, oh. but like, most people would probably act like that. Yeah, you're talking about a zombie apocalypse where yeah. <laughs> you walk, throw all the rules that, and, 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 and ethics that you think people have right now, yeah, those get thrown way out of the window. I mean, and, good thing it's yeah. all make-believe, right? Right, and you may be, you know, your character may be a villain to our heroes, but he might be a hero to the other characters who he sees as villains, you know, everyone's kind of a hero in their own story. You know, the mm -hmm. lines get blurred. And if you survive a zombie apocalypse for like a decade, you've obviously had to do some you've crazy got shit. Right. Yeah, <laughs> you, you, yeah. you didn't just exactly. skate by and just that's the hide part. out the whole time. That right. That's the part. That's the part. I was like, oh, this is a, this is a bad MF. -er. Yeah, absolutely. You know, he, he survived all these years so much so that like his job is to, you know, to do that. Right. <laughs> it's a bounty. How do you, well, I mean, if you really fathom, have you fathomed that? Like being a bounty hunter during a zombie apocalypse? Like how cold bro, do you have to be? That's crazy. Cold, man. Like that guy was like, hey, like, oh, I love the opening sequence where the guy like runs out of the woods. It's like, I need your help. And you're like, you. And you, oh, I know. You can't tell nobody. You can't okay. tell nobody. Well, this will. This, seen it yet. Oh, no, no, no. This will, this will come out after people have seen I, it. This will be. I, yeah, <laughs> uh, I feel you. I feel you. Um, yeah, so that must have been a crazy experience. Um, yeah, man. But you, you know that that was kind of the the cool thing about being invited to to the uh, to the TDW. I mean, TWD world is that it's such a different space that I that I normally get to get to work in. So, right. um, I I liked it. It was, uh, or I like it. I should say it's. <laughs> It's good. It's um, it uh, it allows for um, your imagination to kind of run wild, you know. That's yeah. A good one. Speaking of survival, aren't you in a project called Survival? That's Man, in post production. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's in it's um it's in its last little stages of post production. It'll probably come out around the same time that uh that I fear um, season six uh, premieres. It's called Survival. It's uh, starring uh, Elise Neal and myself, and uh, it's produced by. Um, Lee Daniels' sister, actually, uh, really? Leah, Leah, Leah Daniels, uh, and her husband Henry Butler. They're uh, executive producing, uh, and it's a, it's a thriller. It's a kidnap thriller. Hell yeah! 
That's exciting. I can't wait to watch that. Um, it's it's been crazy with movies this year. How do you where do you stand on, you know, there's some studios that are like, screw it, we'll just put it on VOD. Whereas Well, you know what? Like- it's funny. My sister just went to a, a drive in movie theater and I think we're gonna see I, more of those. She saw my I movie Bobby go. King. I did a movie with um with Malik Fatal and uh and uh, Nick Wolf and uh, Nika Nani Rose and of course the great Mary J. Blige and uh, it was it's a good movie people like it uh, it's called Body Cam so if you haven't seen it it's uh, really cool to check that it'll be cool to check that out but um, my sister saw it that movie at a um, at a drive-in movie theater I didn't even know they had those I thought those were only in like movies like the Heavenly Kid in like the 50s or something like I didn't know they're popping that. back up yeah, now yeah they're coming back and so yeah, I have a couple things on on video on demand and uh, a couple things streaming, but I felt honored that I had a film that was at a drive-in movie theater in, in real time, 2020. It's wild, man, and I uh, it bothers me in, in LA. There's um, so Tenet, you know, Christopher Nolan's new film. He's uh-huh. very sort of like stringent on like it has to come out in theaters and. I'd love to see it in a drive-in, but I guess the rule is you can't see it in a drive-in unless it's also playing in an actual theater nearby. So it's not playing anywhere in LA. Which... It's about to play in Jersey, though. Did you read that? Is it? No. Is it? Yeah, uh, that's the one with John David, right? Yeah, dude. Washington, um, yeah. And Robert it's Pattinson. Happened. And Pattinson, Robert Robert Pattinson. Yeah, it's going to be in uh, Jersey. They're, they're, they're working out some some deals to get it in theaters, and which is going to be landmark because, you know, it's like if you give one – one kid the cookie, the teacher has to give everybody a cookie, right? Right, yeah, so I don't, man. So that means Robert, if that goes through, if that deal goes through, that means we're gonna be, we're gonna get back into the box office. I hope so, man. I, I'm not ready to go to the movies yet. I'll go to a drive-in. I'm not ready to go to movies either. I ain't John, going inside with a bunch, of, even if it's only like 30 people, that's still too many. I wouldn't recommend it either, you know. But, no, you know. no, um, absolutely not. Free will. I know. Yeah. Robert, I don't know if you saw Robert Pattinson uh, just tested positive for COVID and they had to shut down Batman again, which is just like, it's like every other actor now. It's, yeah. it's, 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 be it's careful. still very much time to be, uh, you know, really vigilant and, and safe, you know? Yeah. Have we're, you we're learned anything? Really on the other side of this thing. What's that? Have you learned anything about yourself now that you yeah, have definitely. You know, more time? Definitely. I think we all have. I think, uh, primordially, I've I've learned that time management is is a is one of the things that should be taught in school, right? Like we, we so we many things be, need to be taught in school. Yeah, you know, and so I'm I'm working with my my children to uh, to teach them some of the things that I didn't necessarily get that young. You know, we get the opportunity to uh, to cultivate. You know, if you have kids. You know, you get the opportunity to uh, to cultivate them in a way like that we never have before. And yeah, sometimes it's exhausting and this and that. But uh, you know, this is time that we never get back. So, right. Um, um, I'm just curious, where do you think TV is headed? Because obviously, there's the networks and there's streaming. It seems like everything's going towards streaming. So, do you think networks are just not even going to be around? They're only going to exist on demand. Like, how do you see it playing out? I in think your, they'll, they'll exist. They just won't exist the same way. I mean, you and you have so many, um, so many avenues to get media and content to audiences that the the big boys, so to speak, or the big girls, to be uh, to be to be fair, um, they, yeah, right, to be PC and, and to be correct, um, sure. they are um, they are they're going to always exist, right? Because there's a certain, there's a certain grandfather clause that will happen. So those big entities will have some sort of um, re reinvention or re manifestation of themselves. But I think you will um, see more, um, see more TV stars and TV shows, right. That are going to be, that we're going to be watching on our phone through social media platforms. It's going to see more of those. You know, we'll see. We'll see how the the real quality of those um, competes with studios who have so much money and resource. Um, but what's interesting is that you know, I heard I heard a story about like when John, when Alfred Hitchcock was making films, it literally took twenty crew members to move the camera from one setup to another because the cameras wow. were so heavy. Yeah. And now our our worst cell phone camera is better than their best cameras back then. I know it's nuts. Like I, but this is our, like, <laughs> but our stories 
a lot of our stories pale in comparison to like, you know, Hitchcock, Hitchcock presents. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I say all of that to say, I think the cream will always rise to the top in terms of just like great storytelling, you know? So as the industry changes, I think um, great stories will still find their way to, uh, you know, the, the, the the biggest audiences. Right. What, um, speaking of good stories, what shows are you watching right now? Um, right now I'm watching Lovecraft country actually, which you are in, in the first episode. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But I, I enjoy the show, you know, you know, it's HBO, wild. HBO is like AMC, you know, it's everything is very, very like, you know, so I didn't see all the scripts. So right. I'm still getting, you know, even though I'm a part of the project, I didn't get to see everything while we yeah. were doing it. So it's still, un, it's un, unfolding to me, even though I'm a part of the cast and it's, it's a really, uh, fun show to watch i thought i knew what the show was and then it opens with jackie robinson like batting down an alien and i was like what the hell is happening right now right and now they're like have portals to the garden of eden but it seems like it's a perfect show for this time you know obviously it wasn't planned that way but i mean yeah it's got it's got a magic you know you know literally you know there's magic and there's sorcery and there's uh there's uh a, a really intelligent uh, and, and proletariat commentary on, on race and um, a highlight of the green book yeah. and what that meant to black culture. And uh, you know, it's, it's executive, it's a, it's a, a synergy between JJ Abrams and Misha Green and Jordan Peele. And it's got some cool things about it that, uh, that could really allow it to be successful. Man, would you love to do, or would you like to do a uh, Jordan Peele film at some point? Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. he's a very, very creative guy, man. Um, I'm looking forward to working with him more. Yeah, it drives me. It's, it blows my mind. I mean, I just used to watch him on Mad TV and Key and Peele. Yeah, that, and, well, and then you're just yeah, like, yeah, what? Yeah. You have this in you the he's whole so time? Good, right? He's like, hilarious, man. He's Jesus. hilarious. Oh, you know? Just amazing. Wow. Um, so. Uh, what else do you have planned for, you know, well, well, right for, now? For right now, I mean, right now I'm actually developing a uh, feature that I, I, sh- I shot a little bit of a, of a short version of it before uh, the pandemic thing started. That is thunder. Oh, um, dude, I'm so jealous. <laughs> it hasn't rained um, here since March. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> um, so, but... Um, yeah, it's uh, it's a short, it's a it's a dystopian um, kind of post-apocalyptic film. I'm doing that. I'm oh. developing some mu- some music, um, so because I'm gonna soundtrack it. And, um, yeah, and that's what I'm up to, and uh, and just writing, bro. Nice, that's cool. Uh, any hobbies that you have when you're not yeah, yeah, acting and yeah. creating everything? No, I'm biking. You know, I, I stay, I stay. Um, I stay busy with my hobbies. Yeah, definitely. I'm a, I'm a fanatical biker, you know, cyclist. Oh, okay. um, I need to get a bike. And uh, what else, man? Uh, I'm just into the you... music. I guess my music is, is a hobby. I'm definitely into that. I'm unfamiliar with your music. Tell me about your music. No, I mean, well, you have no one's heard it. Well, not no, oh. no people haven't heard it yet, but it's, it's been kind of like my little, uh, my little secret thing that I've been doing for a while. It's uh, it's finally kind of getting to a place where I should probably share it with some with more people than just my friends. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. It, what what sort of genre is it? Uh, the first thing we're going to release is is um, going to actually be reggae. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, what instruments do you do? You play any instruments? I play trombone, but I didn't do any instrumentation on this. The instrument I used was my voice. Okay, great. Yeah. That's sick, dude. That's awesome. Um, wow. Uh, one final question, very important. Um, with gyms closed for the foreseeable future, how the hell do you stay in shape? Yeah, that's a, um, that's a good question. Calisthenics go a long way, body weight. And this exercise right here, <laughs> you gotta be what's, very careful how you do that, how you do that, that lift right there. What's the diet exercise ratio for a good body? Um, in my humble, potentially, I'm not that important opinion i would say um the ratio is two to one wow you mean more diet than exercise yeah for yeah. sure 
gotcha. Any any good recipe or not recipes, but any? No, good I'm I'm, I'm not the chef recipes. over here. Just you know, try right, to man. try to try to get your fruit and ve- your fruit and veg <laughs> and, and 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 stay 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 light on the meats. That's all you can you know. Light on the meats. Like, drink your water, you know. And the breads, man. We we just went oh, on like a bread. S- bread's so good. <laughs> it is. It's, it's definitely definitely Damn. is. Man. Well. Um, that's all I have for you, man. I've, it's been such a pleasure talking to you and, you know, yeah, likewise, I hope we man. have you back and I hope we, I don't know if we'll see your character again, but you knocked it out of the park in fear and um, I'd love to see more of you, but if not, it was a great one-off. It was amazing. So um, we'll just see what happens down the road. Yeah, indeed. Good to see you, Johnny. Thanks for your time, yeah. man. You too, all buddy. Right. All right. See you. Yeah. All right, and that was my interview with Demetrius Gross. Guys, I hope you really enjoyed it as much as I did talking to him. He's fantastic, and you know, I'm not sure how he would come back later in the season. I'm guessing through a flashback. Hopefully, it happens, but if not, at least we had this amazing performance out of him. Anyway, we will be back next week with Coleman Domingo. I spoke with him a week ago, and I can't wait for you to hear that as well. Until then, wear your mask, be safe, and as always, happy birthday. Good